Day five of our Tassie trip saw us at Queenstown on Tasmania's west coast. We decided to visit the historic Pengana, built in 1898 for the American Robert Stitch, general manager of the Mount Lyle Mining and Railway Company. Today it is a bed and breakfast accommodation. From here you get a panoramic view of Queenstown and its mountains hidden in the clouds. Our destination today was the Arthur River, but due to the breakdown of the ferry across the Pyman River at Corinna, we had to go the long way around via Waratah. Instead of the usual Murchison Highway, we branched off and visited Lake Plimsoll on the Anthony That's Road. The right, See? We climbed a low ridge to see if we could get a better view of the lake. A bit of scrub bashing rewarded us with a view of the lake. I had previously flown the drone over here some years before. Saying, Rex? So the cut, be very careful, the rocks drop off. What do we do to get photographs? Back to the good old west coast weather. What do you reckon, Rex? This is real southwest weather, and I'm as wet as a shag for what we just did to find. At Tulla, we stopped briefly at Lake Rosebury where we had paddled on sea kayaks in past years. Who was that? It, me boat's long, isn't it? <laughs> me boat's long, isn't it? Another stop was at Waratah to view the waterfall. We were now winding our way through the extensive West Coast Ranges. We were now heading west across to Corinna, passing the tailing dams of the Savage River Mine. This Google Earth view shows just how much impact on the environment the iron ore mine has made. Oh yeah, you can see the mine over the back without the, and the waters. How you going there in the back of there, Rex? Mate, you beautiful scenery. We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Nearly the end of the road. <laughs> that was pretty fun dodging potholes. <laughs> and there's been plenty of them. This is the place. We stopped at the Tarkine Hotel for lunch and I flew the drone over part of the Pyman River, once a busy gold mining area. Done very well. We have. <laughs> well done. We're man. here. We didn't hit too many heavy potholes. Because we had to take the long way round, we missed out on a trip down the Pyman River on the Arcadia. But it did bring back memories of previous trips.
after Corinna who travelled the Western Explorer, or otherwise known as the Road to Nowhere, heading for Cooter Rocks and the Arthur River. Another panorama, Rex? Cooter Rocks on the west coast is frequented by fishermen, off-road enthusiasts and a few tourists. I had a close association with this place, as in the 1960s, Bob Greeny and I set up our campsite when we were diving for abalone. The frequent bad weather and big seas meant that you could only dive a few days each month, thus reducing the chance of overfishing. We used aluminium dinghies and a hooker system using a converted air compressor. In these early days in the 60s, our catches of abalone were really good along with plenty of crayfish and other fish. We made a good living selling our shelled abalone in Stanley, but we also lost a lot of gear in storms and bad weather. While Rex took panoramic photos, I took advantage of a lull in the weather to fly my drone over the rocks and reefs we had to negotiate to get to the abalone. On this exposed coast, fishermen have to haul their boats up onto slips to avoid frequent storms. At the end of the world, Arthur River, we arrive just in time for the usual spectacular West Coast sunset. It had been a long day. The extra distance because of the Pyme and Barge breakdown was having its effect. The three, the three of me. 
guys, come on. Please yourself. Here we are. <laughs> oh, this is not beastly, Caleb.